going to start with the basic lines of volleyball. The first line is the end line. Obviously there's two. We have the side lines, again two. We have the 10 foot line or 3 meter line, signifying it's 10 feet or 3 meters away from the net or this last line called the center line. There are a few more smaller lines that are kind of fun to talk about. Uh, the first ones are these four lines in the corners. I believe these are four. When the server serves, uh, the server needs to stand in between these two lines and these dashes help the referees see if that's taking place or not. If you serve from outside of those lines, it's a fault and a point for the other team. The last set of lines here are these extra dashes outside the court uh, along this 10 foot line. Uh, two purposes for this set of lines is uh, if a back row player is attacking from off the court can help determine whether that player is back row or front row or if they foot fault on that 10 foot line which would be a violation. Secondly these lines here uh, represent the substitution zone so if a player from the bench is getting ready to substitute and as soon as they cross that dashed line uh, they have to be substituted or it's a delay of game uh, and too many delay of games results in a yellow card. Only one player can be in, in the substitution zone at a time so this substitution would need to take place first and then the next substitution pair slides into the substitution zone in order for that one to take place. If your team is playing with a libero, the libero can only enter and exit the game um, as well as the players coming on and off between the 10 foot line and the sideline end line corner. So this needs to take place uh, between that 10 foot line and the end line. It cannot be in the substitution zone since it is not a substitution. Quickly about referees, typically the referee on the ref stand is called the R1 or the up ref and the referee on the floor helping with the scores table and watching the net and centerline violations is called the R2 or the down ref. Also part of the refing crew is the line judges. Uh, for beginning players we want to make sure we're standing on the right corners. Uh, so these are always the correct corners. One way I like to remember it by is normally servers will serve from the right back side of the court of this end line and the line judge should stand far away from where most servers will serve that's one way to remember it it is legal to serve from anywhere on this uh, end line so if the server is serving right next to you typically what you want to do is stand behind the server so that you're out of the servers line of sight and you're not a distraction also, you're able to then continue to see down this sideline. So when the serve serves, we can tell is this ball in or out uh, since we're standing within sight of that sideline. After the serve serve, you run back to your corner and do your sideline duties and end line duties as normal. Before the match can start, the down referee or the R2 needs to check the lineups. Uh, and the libero cannot be on the floor during this check. So what needs to happen is the libero checks all the numbers of each player and then normally signals the libero that they are ready to go in and that switch can take place. This is front row base. Generally what you want to do is spread out equidistant uh, across the front row. So the middle obviously would start in the very middle of the court and then uh, the wing players can vary a little bit but just trying to get in between that middle player and the sideline. Middle player and the sideline on this side. So this is a very basic base. When you get to the upper levels you can scheme a little bit differently. So if your opponent is a more of an outside attacking team you can do a spread block so or spread base so basically you're going to um, 
spread out your base and commit a little bit more to here's your bases if they're spread block a little bit more to the outside hitters rather than the middles also in the front row you can do what's called a pinch block so you're going to pinch your wing defenders wing blockers in obviously your middle might stay in the middle and you're going to pull in to help with the middle blocker from the other team uh, so you're going inside out back row base the wing defenders can either be equidistant between imaginary center line and this sideline on both sides or can be a little bit wider uh, to protect your sideline and then anything that you need to play uh, tends to be in front of you middle back is uh, a few steps in from the end line but their main responsibility is corner to corner so they are the only one responsible for these deep balls so when playing defense we need to get from base to defense if the uh, other team is hitting it from the outside hitter spot here we need to make sure we're dropping and driving we don't want to stay in base we're a little bit too close to defend and uh, most of our area is behind us so we want to drop and drive uh, trying to make sure our foot is on the sideline as well as drop and drive here we can be a little bit farther in uh, since we don't need to defend out of bounds and then middle back drop and drive to the end line these are general areas of uh, space that we need to dig uh, so anything within this area would be this right backs left back and middle back from corner to corner one of the biggest areas of improvement I would like to see in our younger players at VCN is transitioning. A lot of times girls forget to even get off the net and then they get set and they're not ready to jump. Uh, so basically a transition means turn and run and we're trying to get to our imaginary X spot. So trying to get behind the 10 foot line ready to take a full approach. I need to turn and run totally past the 10 foot line out of bounds especially for the high school girls uh, in order to take a full approach and be aggressive on my attack so all of these players need to turn and run and get to their uh, their own x spot